been using as a beach profile is really a graph. And the word graph literally means picture. It literally means that. So what we're really creating is a picture in the form of a graph. What kind of graph, by the way? Bar graph, pie graph, what? A line graph, Andy, right? Good. A line graph, all right, or picture of now, Alex, the what? The structure or shape of the beach. Okay, good. I'm going to tell you why this is important. Because we want to understand the measurements involved in creating a beach profile. So what are the measurements involved in this? Chloe? The, um, the distance from the edge of the dunes to the ocean. All right, so we want our horizontal distance, all right? And we don't, don't, don't just want to say horizontal distance because horizontal distance could be this way. We want this horizontal distance. So we want to keep track of the horizontal distance. And we did this every, we made a, a measurement every three meters, right, guys? Mm -hmm. All right, the horizontal distance from the beginning of the beach, in our case the dunes, to the water. All right, and what other measurement is it, do we need? <clears throat> okay, Chloe, what else? Um, the elevation. And the elevation, okay. And then to summarize this, we've, we've got a line graph which is a picture of the structure or shape of the beach. And to get that, to get this, we need to see, to measure the change in elevation with what? The distance. The, the distance, distance, what distance? We measured. From the dunes to the ocean. The horizontal. The horizontal distance from the dunes to the water. So we're going to be measuring the change in elevation. And we see it's dropping here from the edge of the dunes to the water. So I'm going to create a beach profile here. I'm just going to trace the shape of the beach here, beach that we can identify based on this profile. Like what? I have a berm here. Yeah, right. Yeah. Good. And it, typically, this is where our dunes are located. So we have our dunes up here. We have the berm here. We have a mound of sand called a berm. And we have the slope that drops off. I'm also going to indicate the water line. We know that the water level changes with tides, but just as a reference line. So we could indicate a position of the shore line. Okay? But will the shoreline constantly, constantly be changing throughout the day? Yes, mm -hmm. if the tide goes down, where will the shoreline go? Further out. Further and if the, if the tide goes up, the shoreline goes further in. in. But if we're going to be comparing from month to month, year to year, we just need a reference line, a line to refer to. Okay? Can the beach change? Can I change this profile? You see, this is the profile of a summer beach typically. All right, let's create a winter beach now. All right, so to create a winter beach, how might this change? There'd be sandbars. There'd be more erosion. Well, what asked? Who said erosion? Sarah. Okay. So what's going to happen here? The waves are going to get bigger, and it's going to erode away. The Typically, berms. in the winter, we get stronger storms with stronger, more intense wave activity, which does what, Sarah? Uh, it erodes the berms. It erodes the berm away. So I'm just going to do do this with my hands. All right. Okay. You can imagine winter storms. All right. You can imagine it's cold. You can, ooh, that water's cold. You can imagine, ooh, it's winter. All right, and you can imagine strong storms, high winds, snow, blowing snow, and so on and so forth. Okay? And what is happening is it basically eats away at the beach here, like this. And we have what's the process is known as what? Erosion. Erosion. Good. Meanwhile, something is happening offshore. We've got new features being formed underwater offshore. And those would be what? Sandbars. 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 And would that be erosion? Accretion. Accretion, another word? Deposition. 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 So we have, we have erosion and we have deposition. So offshore we have the sandbars being formed, all right? Now, the sandbars were, are built from the sand that was eroded away from the beach. Has the profile changed? Yes. Yes, yes it has. So I'm going to change the profile. And now the profile looks like this. 
So this summer berm has been taken away. What else has changed? The, the, the shoreline. I mean, shore what? Shore what has the shoreline done? It's, it's moved, in, it's it's moved inland. 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 Now, that's an important point because the shoreline, is there a relationship, let me rephrase my question, between the position of the shoreline and the profile? Yes. Yeah. Yes. This is what I really want to make sure we understand here today. And I'm going to put a little house up here. So if there are people that live at the beginning of the beach here at the top of the beach, are they concerned more about the profile or are they more concerned about the position of the shoreline? The position, the position of the shoreline. shoreline. But what causes the change in the position of the shoreline? The erosion. The change to the what? Profile. The change to the profile. And that's what this is about, ladies and gentlemen. When we change the profile, we're going to change the position of the shoreline. And, in, and, and I believe that people in coastal communities are concerned about the position of the shoreline. They're concerned about what's going on with the shoreline. But you have to be concerned about what's happening to the changes to the what? The changes to the profile, all right? Because the changes to the profile are going to tell you what's happening to the change in the shoreline, shoreline because there is a relationship here. And the relationship is, as the beach profile tends to drop, the shoreline tends to what? Move inland. Move inland. And that's, and that's what's really important here. Okay? All right. And that's going to be a big part of the discussion today.